Let's look at the sine of each trig function in each quadrant. So let's say we have an angle in the first quadrant. So let's pretend that this is a point on the terminal side of that angle. The x-coordinate would be positive. The y-coordinate would be positive. So if I wanted to find the sine of an angle in this quadrant, taking the y over whatever r is, so the opposite over hypotenuse is going to be positive. Same thing with the cosine, same thing with the tangent. Everything is going to be positive in the first quadrant. If I were to take a point on the terminal side of an angle in the second quadrant, the x would be negative, the y would be positive. So then the sine of an angle in the second quadrant, opposite over hypotenuse, opposite is going to be positive, hypotenuse is always positive, so positive. Cosine of the angle is the adjacent, negative over hypotenuse, which is positive. And then tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent, so the positive over the negative will be negative. Okay, same thing with the third quadrant, take a point on the terminal side. So everything, well, as far as the x and the y is concerned, is going to be negative. So that means that the sine and cosine are going to be negative, because the opposite would be negative. For the cosine, the adjacent would be negative. Hypotenuse is always positive. But then the tangent of the angle, opposite over adjacent, two negatives make a positive. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. So then sine of the angle, opposite, negative over positive, so negative. Cosine of the angle, adjacent, which is x, positive. And then tangent of the angle, opposite over adjacent, so negative over positive, this will be negative. Okay, keep in mind the reciprocals would also follow the same pattern. So to memorize this maybe in an easier way, let's focus on the things that are positive. So in the first quadrant, everything is positive. So in other words, all of these are positive. So I'm going to use A for all. In the second one, only the sine is positive. So I'm going to denote that with an S. In the third quadrant, only tangent is positive. So I'm going to denote that with a T. In the fourth quadrant, only cosine and its reciprocal is positive. So let me denote that with a C. So we can remember the signs, S-I-G-N, of our trig functions by using just these four letters. A couple ways to remember that. Uh, all students take calculus, or maybe a little bit better here, always skip trig class. Forget that, you didn't hear that from me. Anyway, so using this, let's go ahead and find what angle we're in, given some of the trig functions of theta. So for example, let's say that the sine of theta is negative, so less than zero. And let's say the cosine of theta is positive. Okay, so using this little mnemonic device, let's mark out the quadrants where this would be true. So where sine is negative, let's look at where sine is positive. Sine is positive, always in the first quadrant, and then the second one. So sine is negative in the third and the fourth. So right now we've narrowed it down to three and four. So now from 3 and 4, where is cosine positive? Only in the fourth. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say the secant of theta is negative. And let's say the tangent of theta is negative. Okay, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so I'm looking for where cosine is negative. So this mnemonic device tells me where cosine is positive, so A and C are positive, so that means I've narrowed it down to 2 and 3. Of 2 and 3, where tangent is negative, so I don't want the third quadrant because that's where tangent is positive. Okay, one more. Let's say we have the tangent of theta is positive, and let's say the cosecant of theta is negative. So again, looking for where tangent is positive, so looking for A and T. So it's either going to be 1 or 3. Between 1 and 3, cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, where sine is negative, would be quadrant 3.